I'd like to talk to you about finding angles on a right triangle. Now the three angles on a triangle add up to be 180 degrees. And on a right triangle, we know one angle is given by 90 degrees because it's a right triangle. If we know a second angle, then we can actually find the third angle quite easily by just using the fact that the sum of the three angles has to be 180 degrees. So really, it's only hard to find the second angle. The third angle is quite easy. Now, these other two angles, these non-right angles, we call those acute angles. Those are angles that measure less than 90 degrees. As a reminder, for a right triangle with acute angle theta, we define the functions relative to the angle theta as sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent theta is opposite over adjacent. We've learned over and over that every type of function or mathematical operation has an inverse, and there's no exception to these trig functions. The inverse functions for sine, cosine, and tangent can actually be written two different ways. So for the function sine of something, and when I say of something, I'm, I'm referring to a left parenthesis, an open space, and a right parenthesis. So for sine of something, the inverse is given by either sine with an exponent of negative one of that something, we read that as inverse sine of something, or by arc sine of something, A-R-C-S-I-N. For cosine, the inverse is cosine exponent negative one of something, or arc cosine of something, that's A-R-C-C-O-S. And for tangent of something, the inverse is tangent with an exponent negative one of something, or arctan of something, that's A-R-C-T-A-N. Again, we read this sine with the negative one, cosine with the negative one, and tangent with the negative one as inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent. Now, the inverse trig functions actually have restricted domains on the original function, so they don't work in all quadrants. However, all of these inverses are defined in quadrant one, and the angles in right triangles can all be modeled in quadrant one. So for our purposes in solving for missing angles or right triangles, we are not gonna have any issues with the domain restrictions. But just be aware that they exist in case you get into triangles that eventually appear in other quadrants. Those would be non-right triangles. Also important to know, if Desmos is set for degrees, then the angle coming out of inverse trig functions will be given in degrees. If Desmos is set for radians, then the angle coming out of an inverse trig function will be given in radians. You have to know the angle measurement Desmos is set for. So let's try some. With Desmos set in degrees, let's solve the following two equations. The first one we're going to solve is sine theta equals 3 fourths. Now, how do we undo a sine theta? We use an inverse sine. So I'm going to do sine negative 1, that's sine with an exponent of negative 1, of something on the left, and sine negative 1 of something on the right. I'll drop in the original equation, so now I'll have inverse sine of sine theta on the left, and inverse sine of 3 fourths on the right. Now, of course, inverse sine of sine should just give us theta. And so theta is the inverse sine, or sine negative 1, of 3 fourths. Let's jump over to Desmos and do that calculation. Now, again, we want to do this with Desmos set in degrees. So the first thing I'm going to do is check Desmos to see if Desmos is set in degrees. And now it is. So I'm going to do inverse sine. Inverse sine is in that functions menu, the second column in Desmos inverse sine of 3 fourths, and I get out 48.5903. Let's round that to 48.59 degrees. Theta is 48.59 degrees, and I'll use the degrees symbol to remind myself of that. The next equation we're going to solve is tangent alpha equals 6 fifths. So how do we undo a tangent? We take an inverse tangent. So I'm going to take tangent negative 1 of something on the left side and tangent negative 1 of something on the right side. What goes into the something? I'll just drop in the original equation in two parts. So I'll have tangent inverse of tangent alpha and tangent inverse of 6 fifths. Tangent inverse of tangent alpha is just alpha and then alpha is going to be tangent inverse of 6 fifths. Let's jump over to Desmos and find that. In the functions menu, I can grab inverse tangent 
and then I'll do 6 divided by 5 in the parentheses to get an angle of 50.1944 or just 50.19. And that's 50.19 degrees. Let's just see what happens if we reset Desmos to be radians and run these calculations again. So let's just reevaluate that last step of those two equations again. So that step where we had theta equals inverse sine of 3 fourths or alpha equals inverse sine of 6 fifths. So I'm going to pop over to Desmos. I'm going to go into the wrench menu and I'm going to change this to radians. Now, I don't know if you saw that, so I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to go back to degrees. I want you to watch over on the left-hand panel where we saw the answers for inverse sine of 3 fourths and inverse tangent of 6 fifths. When I switch to radians, watch those answers, and you'll see that those answers actually switch to radians. So it actually goes back and reevaluates what you have in these expressions for radians angles instead. So the inverse sine of 3 fourths is 0.848 radians or I'll round that to 0.85 radians. So that would be theta equals 0 0.85 radians. And alpha would be inverse tangent of 6 fifths, which is 0.876 or 0.88 radians. And that's why it's so important that you know whether Desmos is in degrees or radians when you evaluate for angles. Now let's try setting up the relationship to actually solve from a triangle. So we have a right triangle. It's got a base and a vertical with a hypotenuse of 14. The vertical side is length 6, and the horizontal side is unknown. The angle alpha is between the hypotenuse and the horizontal side, which means that that horizontal side is adjacent to alpha, and we'll call that side A. 6 is the opposite side, and 14 is the hypotenuse. Now, if we're going to find alpha, it would be really helpful if we could use the opposite and the hypotenuse to do that, since we know the opposite value and we know the hypotenuse value. So what trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? Well, sine uses opposite and hypotenuse. So let's set up sine alpha equals opposite of our hypotenuse, that's 6 fourteenths. And now we should be able to solve for alpha. We need to use an inverse sine on both sides. So inverse sine on the left-hand side and inverse sine on the right-hand side. We'll drop in the original equation. That's inverse sine of sine alpha and inverse sine of 6 fourteenths, which leaves us with alpha equals inverse sine of 6 fourteenths. I'm going to switch back to degrees since I like to see the angles on a triangle in degrees. So let's go back to Desmos and switch to degrees and do inverse sine of 6 divided by 14. This gives us an angle of 25.376 or 25.38 degrees. And knowing that alpha is 25.38 degrees, we could actually find the other angle of the triangle since we could say 180 degrees minus 90 degrees, that's the right angle, minus 25.38 degrees, that's the angle we just found, and the result of that would be the angle we don't know. So that would be 64.62 degrees. So alpha is 25.38 degrees, and the missing angle is 64.62 degrees. Now I'd like you to try one. So solve for the indicated angle in the right triangle below. That would be angle beta. Make sure to indicate whether the angle is in degrees or radians. Let me describe the triangle. We have a vertical side, a horizontal side, and a hypotenuse of 15. The vertical side is length 10. The horizontal side is unknown. Beta is the angle between 10, the vertical side, and 15, the hypotenuse. Pause the video and give this a try. Okay, we're back. Let's see how you did. The first thing I'm going to do is label my sides relative to the angle beta. So the side opposite beta is that base, and I'm going to call that B. The hypotenuse is 15, and the adjacent side to B is 10. It would be really helpful if we could use 15 and the 10 
to solve for the angle. So that means we need a trig function that uses hypotenuse and adjacent, which would be a cosine function. So cosine of beta would be given by adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 10 over 15. Now, how do I find beta? I need to take an inverse cosine on both sides. So I'll take inverse cosine of something on the left and inverse cosine of something on the right. Dropping into the somethings, I'll put inverse cosine of cosine beta on the left and inverse cosine of 10 fifteenths on the right. So beta should be the inverse cosine of 10 fifteenths. Let's jump over to Desmos and see what that gives us. I'm still in degrees, so I'm going to do inverse cosine of 10 fifteenths, which gives me 48.189 or 48.19 degrees. So now we know what beta is. If we had to find the other missing angle, we could subtract 90 and 48.19 degrees from 180 degrees. One more problem for you to try. I want to see if you can find all the missing sides and the missing angles in the right triangle below. So this time we have a right triangle where the right angle is in the top of the triangle. So there's a base opposite that with a left angle and a right angle. The left angle of the triangle is alpha. Opposite of alpha is 50. The right most angle on the triangle is beta. And the side opposite that is 60. The hypotenuse, the base of the triangle, is unknown. Pause this video and give this problem a try. Okay, we're back. Let's go ahead and label this triangle with some relationships. First of all, the side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. And it'll be the hypotenuse whether we're talking about angle A or angle B. So let's call that hypotenuse side C. Now, we can actually find side C quite easily by using the Pythagorean theorem because we know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm going to wait to do that for a little while, but just know we can do that when we get towards the end of the problem. I'm going to look for angle alpha first. And that's just an arbitrary choice. I could use either angle alpha or angle beta, but whichever angle you use, I would highlight it so that you can then label the relationships appropriate to that angle. For angle alpha, 50 is the opposite side and 60 is the adjacent side. If you were using angle beta for your relationships, then those two would be reversed, which is why it's important to know which angle is the reference for your definitions. If I want to find angle alpha, it would be helpful if I could use 50, which is the opposite side, and 60, which is the adjacent side. And which trig function uses opposite and adjacent? Tangent uses opposite and adjacent. So I'm going to set up tangent of alpha equals 50 over 60. That's the opposite over the adjacent. And to solve for alpha, I would do an inverse tangent of something on the left and an inverse tangent of something on the right. The something on the left is tangent alpha, and the something on the right is 50 sixtieths. So now I have alpha equals inverse tangent of 50 over 60. Let's go ahead and find that in Desmos. I'm still in degrees. So inverse tangent of 50 divided by 60 gives me 39.805 or 39 point, well, let's just leave it that. 39.8055 would round to 39.806. So alpha equals 39.806 degrees. And let me go ahead and find beta now. Beta would be 180 minus 90 for the right angle minus 39.806, which is going to be 50.194 degrees. So now I have the two angles. All I'm missing is the last side. And remember, we can find that last side using the Pythagorean theorem. So 50 squared plus 60 squared should equal c squared. So that would be Let's go over to Desmos and find 50 squared plus 60 squared, which is 6,100. So 6,100 equals C squared. We'll take a square root on both sides. So C equals the square root of 6,100. And I'm sure we can find an approximation for that. 
which is 78.102. So now we have all the sides and all the angles of the triangle. I'm going to go ahead and highlight those or circle those to make them obvious. Angle alpha was 39.806 degrees. Angle beta was 50.194 degrees. And side C was 78.102 degrees. And I don't need to actually label them all in the triangle as long as the triangle has the labels that match these. So I have labeled C on the triangle and alpha and beta are also labeled on the triangle. By the way, we call this solving a triangle when we find all the missing sides and all the missing angles.